So you can see it right here. Dotted line at one. And we know that that happens because it's on the bottom of a fraction. And when you set it equal to zero, it gives us one. So that means on the bottom, whoa, sorry, too big. And I know on the bottom it was equal to 1, so that means the equation then had to be, or the factor had to be x minus 1. So I know that's on the bottom. What's something else we notice about this graph? There's a hole. There's a hole right there. There is a hole in the graph at negative 2. So, no, I'm, I lied. It's not a negative 2. It's a negative 1 right here. So, x equals negative 1. So, that really means that x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, think back. I know it's been a while. But what caused something to become a hole in the graph? When it canceled out. So that factor, x plus 1, has to be where? Yeah, it's got to be on top and the bottom because it would have to cancel out to cause a hole. So I have x plus 1 on the bottom and on top. Yes, you may. All right, then let's see, we've got to have another, we know it's supposed to be, oh, we have a horizontal asymptote, it's kind of hard, we can't really see it, they may know where it's at, yeah, it's really right here, we just can't. So if it's right there, um, what has to be true? If it's on the equation, if it's on y equals zero, it's bottom heavy. So that's helpful because right now it is bottom heavy. So we're good. The only thing that we have to worry about is getting any of these points to actually work out. So like I have, it's a hole in the graph, but I have a point here, although it is a hole, or I can use this point here, or I can use this point here, or it looks like there's a point there, but I really think the easiest one would be that one. Anytime you have an intercept, X or Y intercept, that's the easiest point to use. Okay. Does anybody remember from our rules before how we found the Y intercept? I'm going to go back and try to find this was something that was one of the things that I taught, I think, while you were, while I was gone. I don't think I taught that much then. Here we go. The quotient of the constant terms. That is what gave us the y-intercept. Okay. Here we go. So right now, the constant terms that I have, I have a 1, 
on the bottom. And if I multiplied these on the bottom, 1 times negative 1, I'd have a negative 1. And that's supposed to be my y-intercept. Well, it's not. I need it to be negative 4. So what can I multiply right here to make it divide and give me negative 4? Yes, thank you. I'm making it sound much harder than it actually is. And I don't mean to. But yeah, if I had a 4 right there, then my constant on top would be 4. And my numbers, that's the constant, on bottom would be negative 1, which would give me negative 4. And then we were also supposed to multiply these out. And I've already run out of room. So I have on top 4x plus 4. And on bottom, that's the difference of two squares. So it's x squared minus 1. Hard to see, sorry. Okay, we're going to do this for a little while. We're going to get the gist of it. Okay, let's look at the one next to it. We have a horizontal asymptote, or a vertical asymptote. What is the up and down asymptote? Four. So that means on bottom, I had, oh, thank you. I had to have a nay x minus four in order for it to equal four when I set it equal to zero. Okay, I also have a hole in the graph. There's a hole in the graph, the cursor's right here. And that is at the point three. So that means I have an x minus three that has to go on top and on bottom because that's what creates the hole in the graph. Next, we have a horizontal asymptote. Where is that horizontal asymptote? It's at positive 2. So that's like um, How does a horizontal asymptote occur when it's not y equals 0? What had to be going on? What kind of heavy did it have to be? Top heavy. Top heavy gives us slant sometimes. That's Bottom heavy gives us zero. So it must be same heavy. So that means I have to have something here that has an x in it because x times x gives us x squared. And then x times x on the bottom also gives us x squared. And in order to get same heavy, I have to have leading coefficient over leading coefficient, and it has to be a 2. So I know I'm going to have to have a 2x here. This time, I do have a y-intercept, but I don't really know what it is. It's hard to see where it is. 
So I'm going to use another point, one that I know, I won't say exactly what it is, but closer to what it is. It's like that hole. This hole right here is at 3, negative 7. So when I cancel out these x minus 3's, that's what caused this 3. And what would leave me with the negative 7 is what's left on top. I don't know what it is. Over what's left on bottom. And that would give me the 7th. 